Hey guys, John Lindquist here. Uh, to introduce the builder pattern, let's first take a look at the maps that we're going to be building. So this is going to be called the grassland map. Uh, we have, you know, a background, some terrain, and then the minerals uh, on each part of the map. Uh, this would be a desert map. So there's still background here, a different type of desert terrain, and uh, these are the desert minerals. And in the junkyard, you have that kind of abyss background, the metal type terrain and the minerals everywhere. So you can kind of think of these maps as falling into two parts. Um, one being the layout, the XY coordinates, which defines where everything goes. And the second part being the pieces that make this map uh, fall into place. So the pieces of this would be grassland pieces, uh, which has the grassland terrain, the watery background. Um, the pieces to this would be the, uh, you know, the metal terrain and the, uh, you know, black background and the different types of minerals. So taking that approach, let's look to see how the builder pattern can help us separate those two pieces of logic, the x, y values of where everything goes, and the uh, types of pieces that are used in each of the maps. So to make this happen, we're going to need uh, two players, uh, uh, two, two classes in play, I guess. Uh, one's going to be a director. Um, this is the guy who's going to talk about uh, whatever types of layouts uh, is going to be built. He's going to tell the builder what to do. Uh, so we'll put him in a pattern craft builder package and then create an instance of him. And the other guys are going to be builders. Now these builders are going to be specific to the type of map they're building. Um, so we're going to have a grassland builder, uh, which we'll start with first, and we'll put him in pattern craft builder and then create an instance of the grassland builder. So now the director is going to tell the builder, he's going to say, hey, build map type, uh, build type one. Um, and we'll just say that type one is this. Now, one thing I can't do just because it would make the tutorial last forever is pass in, you know, arrays or, you know, height maps or anything of where all these pieces would go. So you're just going to kind of have to pretend with my trace statements that those represent, um, uh, configuring where all the map pieces would go. So the director is going to tell the, the grass builder um, to build type 1. And what that means is, uh, let's rename that to builder, is that he's going to tell the builder to um, init. That means uh, create a new map. He's going to tell the builder to create the background. He's going to tell the builder to uh, you know create the terrain. And he's going to tell the builder to um, create the minerals. We'll create these methods on the, the grassland builder. So you can see in our grassland builder, init's going to be where the, um, what's called the product. In this case, the product is a map. So we'll say uh, the new map is not material base. Uh, the new map is going to be initialized, and we'll create that map class. Um, we'll add that as a field, which can be uh, referenced elsewhere in our class, because after all these steps are taken, uh, background, terrain, and minerals, we're actually going to need to get the map out of the builder. So we'll return the map here, return map. So now that we have this um, pretty much set up, you can see how the logic works. Um, the director is created, the, the builder type is created, the director tells the builder to do something, and then once that's done, um, you're going to get the product, in this case, the product is a map, out of the builder. Um, so once this is all completed, you could run through and use the map however you need to use it. Uh, so if we take a look at how we're going to do this, um, let's first extract these methods into a, a super class, you know, a kind of an abstract class where the um, where we, a class that we can extend to create other builders such as the junkyard builder and the uh, desert builder, and we'll just name this class map builder. Um, we'll say extract and use where possible, and then we'll move everything up into it. So extract and use where possible. Um, it's important because 
it means that the director now only depends on map builder it doesn't depend on the grass map builder or the grassland builder and so once you you can pass into the build type any sort of um, any sort of build you want to pass into it so the grassland builder is going to have its own specific um, implementation of these methods and we're basically going to leave if you look at the map builder class um, we're going to leave init where it creates the map and get map where it returns the map pretty much untouched because uh, that's going to stay uh, consistent throughout the other maps unless for some reason you have a, a case you need to change it um, so in this case for a grassland builder we're going to say hey why don't you set the background of the map to a grassland background and got to make sure to create that field and why don't we set the uh, the terrain of this map to the grassland terrain create that field and same thing here we're going to set the minerals to the grassland minerals now again one thing to note um, the map would usually be much, much more complex you know containing uh, arrays of rec or vectors of the you know where all the pieces x y values and layers and everything would go um, so you would basically pass those into once you tell it to build type one um, you'd pass those as parameters into create background create terrain create minerals and then where these methods are implemented you would have a parameter like um, coordinates or whatever and you would set the maps coordinates here uh, because that'd be much uh, exponentially more complicated than this I'm just passing uh, these uh, simple uh, string values so now that our grass builder is set up um, we can actually uh, trace out the result here um, so we can say trace uh, map background map uh, terrain and map minerals and once we run this you can see those three values pop up here grass grassland background grassland terrain grassland minerals I guess I just type grass so now we have this up and running we have our director and a builder the directors telling the builder to build type 1 and then we get the resulting map from that process of init create background create terrain create minerals um, we can show you I can show you how easy it is to implement another type of builder uh, so if I simply um, I'm just going to copy this class uh, so copy him and uh, rename him as a desert builder and then I'm just going to take all the grassland pieces and change those to desert um, I guess there's this just hiding grass there too so now our desert builder um, if we just want to create him in our um, in our document class here we can set up a second uh, a second builder this one being the desert builder desert builder um, and he's going to be a of type map builder and then the director there only ever needs to be one guy telling everyone else to do what to do um, passing the desert builder and then we can um, so you can say desert builder get map and then this could be map two so the desert um, the desert builder is going to build um, the exact same layout configuration um, whatever you want to call it that the uh, grassland builder is building but this time it's going to use the desert materials and the desert pieces to construct it so if we um, on this you'll see that now we have desert background desert terrain and desert minerals now the director can also give different um, type different commands different configurations layouts so if we tell him to build type 2 and we set up a um, a second type to use here you know we can do builder init um, which will almost always be done unless for some reason you want to add a second step onto something a map that's already in the process of being created um, you could do that if you wanted to um, and this time we can just say uh, create terrain and create 
uh, sorry, builder create minerals. So we're just going to skip creating the background altogether because maybe the type 2 doesn't need a background. And then again, you could configure a completely different uh, set of arrays of where all these uh, pieces would go and pass them into type 2, um, which is probably much more realistic than just getting rid of the background. But uh, just to show you how these could differ, uh, I decided to do it that way. So now if we tell the desert builder to build type 2, and he's not going to build a background this time, um, you can see that if we run this again, that it's going to say null, because null is the background in desert terrain and desert minerals. And then, of course, um, you could always add additional steps. Um, so if we told him to build type 3, and then said builder init, Builder, create background, builder, uh, create terrain, builder, create minerals, and then, you know, add builder, create sky. Um, all we'd have to do here to make this work is now that create sky is in the map builder class, um, all we have to do is go back to whatever builder is going to use this. Uh, so I think uh, we're working on the desert builder right now. Um, make sure to override create sky, and then we'll have to add um, the sky to our desert sky. We'll have to add the sky to our map, and then we should be set and ready to go if we just say, uh, so build type 3, background, terrain, mineral, sky, um, and then, which is going to give us map 2, so we go background, terrain, minerals, map 2, dot sky. And then once we run this one, you can see that now we have desert background, desert terrain, desert minerals, and desert sky. So you can see the value here is um, you separate uh, the configuration, um, you know, the order of the, that these things are built, um, depending on whatever you're building in, in your program. Uh, you could build things in different orders. Um, maybe for some reason you need to build your rain twice or three times, or, you know, do a very minimalistic setup, or do a very, very complicated with uh, tons of parameters. Um, you could do a lot of configuration here in this director, which tells the builders what to do. And then the individual builders, such as Grassland Builder and whatnot, can take those and use those parameters um, however they need to in their specific implementation. So the grassland would, you know, transform the bitmaps and manipulate colors however the grassland would look. Um, and the same thing with the desert. And, you know, again, this could be uh, whatever type of builder, whatever type of object you're going to do. Um, and again, this is all about uh, the resulting product being, in this case, being the map. So you start from, um, you start thinking about what am I going to build with this? And you say, okay, I'm going to build a map. I'm going to need someone to tell, uh, to configure the map, and I'm going to need someone to actually put all the pieces together. Um, and then you kind of work your way from there. You decide which types you want to build. You decide how the implementations are going to work. And then at the end of the day, you have a map uh, set up and ready to do whatever you want with it. So there you go. That's the builder pattern.